Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about column chromatography. And this is a series of the chromatography techniques and among them, second one is a column chromatography, which we are going to learn. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about the principle of the column chromatography, experimentation, packing of the column and the procedure, how the column chromatography occurs and the mechanism as well as the applications. So firstly, let us discuss about the principle of the chromatography. So what is the main aim of the chromatography? The main aim of the chromatography is the separation of the molecules, you know, from a given mixture or also from a given sample. So uh, that separation of the molecules occur by the technique which we use called chromatography. And what is special uh, about this column chromatography? Now let us see. So this is a lab technique which is mainly used for the separation of the molecules in the chemical compound mixture. And even we know that the stationary phase as well as the mobile phase will be common in each and every chromatography technique. In each and every chromatography technique, the stationary phase as well as the mobile phase will be common. So but the, but the stationary phase which we use and the mobile phase which we use will be different when compared to the other chromatography techniques. Okay, so here the stationary phase which we are going to use will be in the solid form and here the mobile phase which we are going to use in this column chromatography will be in the liquid form. So here the stationary phase which we use is adsorbent and here the mobile phase which we are going to use is solvent. So now let us see the experimentation, I mean the apparatus which you have to take for this column chromatography technique. So now let us see about it. So experimentation. So firstly you have to take a glass tube and make sure that the glass tube should be up to 20 to 30 centimeters long and its diameter should be up to 2 to 3 centimeters okay and that glass tube consists of large inlet as well as a small outlet so this is called as large inlet inlet is nothing but where you add the mixture into the tube into the column okay so this is called as inlet make sure that the inlet should be large in size and coming to the outlet the outlet should be small in size so what is meant by outlet outlet is a small opening from which the separated mixture will be get eluted out okay will get eluted out so that, that's the first point about the glass tube coming to the plug or tap. So here plug or tap plays a major role in such a way that, uh, you know, leakage of the solvents, which are solvent and as well as the solute, which is present inside the tube doesn't occur. It prevents the, you know, leakage of the mixture, which is present inside the tube. And next to come into the cotton wool or glass wool. And here before experimentation itself, you have to add cotton wool. I mean, you have to keep the cotton wool inside the test tube. And when you keep this cotton wool inside the test tube, it will move towards the surface and it will get settled over in this, I mean, this glass wool, you know, or as the cotton wool will get settled over at the base of this tube. So what is the main purpose of this, uh, you know, cotton wool is that it mainly prevents the flow of this mixture components into the, uh, into the outer environment. Okay, that's the main purpose of this cotton wool. So now let us learn about the packing of the column. So here the packing of the column, what is meant by column actually? Column is nothing but the inner space which is present inside the tube is said to be as column because here the term which we are using is the column chromatography. So here we have to call this inner space of the tube as a column. Okay, so in this column, what how you how you prepare this column, how you pack this column actually? So by using stationary phase. So stationary phase is nothing but the solid form which we are going to use in this column chromatography which I have said here the before beginning at the video of itself so here at the adsorbent the adsorbent is nothing but the stationary phase which are going to use and that adsorbent are nothing but the silica or aluminia so here in the prep in the packing of this column we are going to use silica or aluminia as the adsorbent uh, or else as a stationary phase so firstly we are going to add the adsorbent and make sure here the packing of the column doesn't involve only the stationary phase but also the mobile phase will also get added into this packing of the column in such a way that when you are going to add the silica or aluminia into the tube, then immediately you are going to add the solvent also. Solvent is nothing but the mobile phase. So when, with the silica or aluminia is nothing but the stationary phase. So when you add the stationary phase into this tube, then immediately you have to add the mobile phase also. So when you add the mobile phase, then what happens? So here, the, where the stationary phase will get dissolved into the mobile phase. So this dissolving and this process occurs in two methods. That's nothing but the dry method as well as the wet method. So firstly, let us learn about the dry method. So the column should be filled with the dry silica powder. Remember this dry silica powder is nothing but the stationary phase because it is solid in form. Okay, which I have said here at the beginning of the video itself. So the column should be filled with the dry silica powder. Column is nothing but the space which is present inside the tube I have said you right. So the silica powder first it should, uh, you know, first it should be added into the test tube. Sorry, sorry, what you have got in this glass tube. So firstly, you have to add the silica powder into the glass tube and then suitable solvent. Why I have mentioned here suitable solvent because here the mobile phase 
depends upon the type here the mobile phase which we are going to add depends upon the nature of the stationary phase only okay remember this one so here i have mentioned suitable solvent so suitable solvent is added to the silica powder so what is the first thing which you have to do first thing which you have to do is firstly you have to add the silica powder and when you add the silica powder then the suitable solvent for that silica powder will be added again into the test tube or as a glass tube and then now what you have to do now what will happen here the solvent here the silica powder will get dissolved into the solvent that's nothing but the stationary phase will get dissolved into the mobile phase okay so here this is nothing but absorbent here adsorbent is nothing but the stationary phase along with this absorbent even the you know liquid that's nothing but the solvent will also be present so along with the stationary phase mobile phase will also be present this is the dry method and make sure till the end the column need to be kept wet with the solvent okay so when when the when we are going to add solvent into the silica powder and now this will be present in the tube right in when this present in the tube then immediately the total column will get become wet will become wet so uh, that wet nature should be continued till the end of the process so so that will be happen in the dry method so now coming to the wet method so here what we have done we are going to take the uh silica powder and then we are going to add the solvent inside the tube right so here firstly only you have to take the silica and solvent before adding into the tube itself you have to add the silica and solvent together to form a slurry and now this slurry is going to add into the column with the help of a funnel or else injection okay so this will be the process of the wet method so now let us see the procedure of this column chromatography so up to now what we have done we have we are going to add the stationary phase along with the mobile phase also so remember here the you know solid material as well as the liquid material also present but the solid material which we added has got dissolved into the liquid right so here that's only the reason i have mentioned it with blue color so this is the stationary phase which consists of the mobile phase okay so here this is the uh, sample which are going to add so here normally the procedure will involve four steps students so now i'm going to explain you about the first step so in first step what you have to add is mixture should be added mixture should be dissolved in the stationary phase okay so when it get dissolved in the stationary phase it will not get completely dissolved okay it will not get completely dissolved in such a way that it will form layers so how these layers will be formed let us see now so here the sample mixture will be added to it with the help of uh, injections with the help of a micro injections or else injections or else any funnel we are going to add the sample mixture at the surface of the stationary phase okay so this will be the first step so in the second step what happens so in the second step again you have to pour some amount of solvent upon this sample mixture so this will be the sample mixture so when you pour some amount of solvent into the sample mixture then what happens is that so this this blue color indicates this uh, ind indicates the amount of solvent which is going to add again so when you add some amount of solvent into this tube then what happens is that the sample mixture will starts uh, separating like this but the separation occurs in a crowd form that's nothing but here it is present in a crowd form right but if you see in this case it is not present in a crowd form it is it has been separated uh, properly but here it is not separated properly it is present in a crowd form but it is separated but in the crowd form so here the green color one is one of the component blue color one is another component and the red color one which i have drawn is another component so don't call it as a blue it is a violet so this violet will be another component so here three components which are you are going to take here so one is green color component another is violet color component and another one is red color component so this components get separated from the sample mixture itself so how it gets separated when you add some amount of solvent here so when the solvent is added here then the pressure will get increased when the when the pressure gets increased then what happens immediately the separation of the components occurs from the sample mixture now what happens in the third step in the third step some amount of solvent again another amount of solvent will get added into the tube into the glass tube so now what happens is that again more amount of pressure will get increased when the pressure will get increased immediately what happens this mixture the component mixture which has been separated in a uh, you know in a crowded form will get separated properly in the third step but not in a crowded form but if you see in the second step it is separated in a crowded form but if you see in the third step it is not separated in a crowded form it is separated properly and clearly which you can see here okay where the green color one has been separated properly the white color has been separated and even the red color has been separated individually individually but here it is crowded in form and now here why are you, as you are adding more amount of solvent here then some amount of solvent is present at the surface should be ejected right so you have to take any beaker or else any other bowl here at the below of this tap and now you have to switch on the tap when you on the tap then immediately the solvent mixture will get protruded out so when the immediately this get protruded out then all of these separated samples 
you know all of the separated mixture will get separated properly and clearly and coming to the fourth step in fourth step what happens is that now each and everything will get separated right so the separated components will get protruded out now so here the finally the elution of the separated sample occur so in this way the procedure occur of this column chromatography so here the total four steps has been uh, placed a major role here the first step is mixture should be added uh, which will get dissolved in the stationary phase solvent plus silica that's nothing but which i have said you and now here the mobile phase is nothing but the solvent will get added continuously till the separation of the mixture occurs so here the solvent will get added continuously till the separation of the mixtures occur like this okay so coming to the third step components get separated but in a crowd form here it the components get separated in a crowd form but here if you see in the third case the components will get separated properly and once the component gets separated properly then uh, then the remaining amount of sol sol you know solvent will get protruded out when the remaining solvent will get protruded out immediately the you know the the separated components will get also protruded out in this way you can separate each of the you know component which has been protruded out from the sample mixture so now let us see the mechanism which involves in this chromatography technique so here as 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 i have said you here three particles which i have took that's nothing but the red one violet one and the green color one so which type of particles will get eluted first firstly the particles normally you have to know what type of particles will be present in that crowd form so when the mixture is in the crowd form then the particles which are present in the crowd form are two types of particles that's nothing but the pol uh, particles which consists of high polarity or high adsorption capacity another particles are low which consists of low polarity or low adsorption capacity these two of, these two type of molecules will be present in the crowd form that are that's nothing but which i explained you in the second step so when more amount of solvent will get added from the you know inlet then what happens is that this polarity will get extended in such a way that wait a second so if you see here when more amount of solvent will get uh, you know added into this tube then immediately uh, you know this what i have said you here the high polarity and the high adsorption capacity right so here the, this red color one consists of low polarity and here this violet color one consists of medium polarity and this high uh, red color sorry green color one consists of high polarity so low polarity medium polarity and high polarity so the molecules which consists of low polarity will get eluted out first so the red color one will get eluted out and then later the purple color will get eluted out and later the green color will get eluted out so finally from this you can understand that the low polarity or non polar or low absorption capacity molecules will get eluted first then then only the high polarity or polar molecules or the high adsorption capacity molecules will get eluted second that's nothing but the last okay so firstly what happens low polarity molecules will get eluted and then only the high polarity molecules will get eluted so if you see here the order like this the low polarity is nothing but the red molecules which i have said which i have drawn in the you know in the procedure itself the red molecules will get eluted and the medium or polar molecules which are in the purple color will get eluted second and lastly the high polar molecules will get eluted out so now let us see the examples or the applications so here the polymers like nylon are used for the separation of sugars and fatty acids starch is used for the separation of racemates and the powder sugar is used for the separation of pigments so what are these polymers starch and powder sugar all of these are the adsorbents which are going to use as a stationary phase so all of these are used for the separation of these components called sugars and fatty acids racemates and pigments so now uh, let us see the proper applications of this separation of geometrical isomers like cis and trans isomers separation of racemates and separation of tautomeric mixture so all of these are the applications of this column chromatography so hope you people would understand about this technique called column chromatography and if you just like this video you can subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box i'm going to clarify it immediately